okay guys I finished it I finally I finished finish line the finish line and it was so good you guys I loved this series I I wouldn't say it's like the best series I've ever read but I thoroughly enjoyed it I would give it a 4.25 out of 5 I considered giving it a 4.5 but there were certain things that I think I didn't like enough that made me drop like a quarter of a star um, and let's talk about everything that happened so yeah book two it left us off with <clears throat> Tobias pushing Cecilia away again saying like no I don't want you like rejecting her in every way he thought he could the like one of my least favorite tropes, the hurt them to save them. I hate that. Um, but anyway, he does that. And <clears throat> you really think that he's done it. He's like nail in the coffin of their relationship. She has moved on. She's living in a small town. She's opened up a restaurant. Definitely not living her like millionaire life. Um, and she's just settled. She's tired of all the shit and she is just wants to be happy and find something that's for her. Um, and he shows up all this time later. I think she, I think she was gone for maybe like eight, 10 months. Um, and then he shows up at her doorstep and was like, hey, remember all of that that I said before that I didn't want you and that like, we're never gonna work. Um, JK, 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 I do want you, I love you. And I had my reasons for pushing you away again. Um, and she is not ready to cave so easily this time. She puts him through it. He has settled a lot of the things, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, in the brotherhood so that he's able to take this time off he's put power in the hands of sean and a couple other people so that he can get his woman back um and he's very determined and she's also very determined to not give in so easily to not be weak and i love that for her because i feel like he put her through so much if she had caved so easily, I would have been very frustrated. Um, but he is also like, really, Cecilia, this life you're living, like, yeah, it might be nice for a little while, but you are more than this. Like, this life is not enough for you. Living in this small town, um, owning this restaurant, like, it's a fine life, but you're more than this. And she sees that he is living with her and it's like awkward for her to see him living this more like domestic lifestyle as he's like at her house every day like walking her dog and like going to the bank and doing all of these like normal everyday person type activities she just feels like he doesn't belong in that which makes her feel like you know why do i want to drag him into my life again and cave into this relationship when he's this is never going to be enough for him either. He's always going to need to be that person in control who's like making those big life changing world altering decisions. He can't live in the suburbs, you know, being the house husband of a diner woman. And he's like, you either. Okay. Like this is fine for now, but you're pretending and you're fooling yourself if you think that this is the life that's going to keep you happy. Um, <clears throat> so they go back and forth between that. I really liked um, how things were wrapped up in their relationship. He found out I kind of like the, the very last conflict, the very last battle between him and the Frenchman that um, we got to see in a lot of Dom or Tobias's flashbacks, which I loved this book was dual perspective and that was something that I felt like I was missing in the last two books I get why we couldn't have that in the last two books because we needed to be just as confused and just as in the dark as Cecilia that's how the writer wanted it to be but I would have given my left pinky toe to 
figure out, not really obviously, but to figure out like what was going through <clears throat> Sean and Dominic's minds in like that whole thing. I just really wanted to know what they were thinking, but if we did know, then we wouldn't have been in the dark like Cecilia. Um, so I understand why we couldn't, we needed to keep those vibes, but I was very excited to finally get a male perspective. So we get Tobias's um, POV and we get a ton of flashbacks of his life. One thing that was pleasantly surprising was I thought he would totally be like this man whore who was like, I'm good looking and I know it. And I'm gonna use that to my advantage to like get what I want and to like manipulate situations. But he never really did that. He, <clears throat> um, yeah, he, he never, used like sex or things like that to manipulate people in his past to get it to get what he wanted which I liked because I am like a very jealous person like even when I read books if it's like a flashback of them in a relationship with someone else before they're with like the female lead I'm still like seething me like oh that relationship never should have happened because they weren't the one and like it's so ridiculous but um it was nice that we didn't um get like a ton of flashbacks of Tobias just slutting it up in Europe um so I liked that aspect <clears throat> surprisingly it was like Sean and Dominic who were more like the ladies men who like sometimes shared women and sometimes didn't. And that brings me to another point that I really appreciated. As I have talked about in the past, I tend to enjoy more like the one man and one woman together in like a monogamous, passion filled romance and I don't really like sharing because I think that in this book specifically she really fell in love with Dominic and she really fell in love with Sean because they fulfilled different parts of a whole relationship that she needed. Um, Sean was sort of that brighter, peppier, introspective, outdoorsy, sunny disposition. And um, Dominic was more of like the grumpy, smart, suffer in silence, read on rainy days, sort of dark, dominant personality. <clears throat> and she needed both of those things. And that's why she couldn't choose. And she loved them both and she fell in love with them both. But the reason that she was meant to be with Tobias was because he helped raise those boys and he was basically like the original both of them in one person and he was the one person who could fulfill all of those things now that's not to say that just because someone can fulfill all those things that you need in a relationship that you'll always be happy and that things will never go wrong their relationship was toxic a lot of the time let's be honest um and they fought a lot and they caused each other a lot of emotional hurt and damage but in the end, they were the ones for each other. They were like the other half of each other's soul. And <clears throat> I just think that it like even more kind of solidified that for me. Like, yes, you can love more than one person, but there's only one person that's gonna be like the other half of your soul. Like, um, and I just liked how it was kind of betrayed that way. Like, yes the way it was written i grew attached to sean and dominic and the dynamic that they had with cecilia and i didn't like the way that tobias came in and the way that the other gentleman found out and like that was not good tobias made a lot of shit choices but um i do feel like i liked how things turned out and it was nice because while Tobias came back, he was like, I promise, I'm gonna be honest with you. We're done with this whole lying and it's time you know the truth. And she's like, that's all I ask. Like, I'm okay if you wanna protect me, if like you need that extra security, fine. But you have to be honest with me. We are partners, we gotta be in this together if you wanna be with me. And he was like, yes, question mark. But he still like, 
there were things he felt like he couldn't tell her. And so she <clears throat> went like sneaky behind his back and she was like recruiting ravens of her own and was making her own plots behind his back. And in the end at the big climax where they fight the other Frenchmen, we're circling back to that point I was making earlier. Um, <laughs> <clears throat> she ended up being the one to like wrap it up and come out on top because she was making plans that he couldn't and that he couldn't see and she was like I did this me without your help and he's like what you lied to me and she's like how does it feel bitch <laughs> um <laughs> and <clears throat> I don't know why like I don't have a sore throat but I feel like I have just like something there. I don't know what it is. But anyway, maybe I just need another sip of rosé. Maybe that's what I need. She did good at the end of the series. She proved herself and he realized that he had been underestimating her. The Ravenhood has come such a long way. They have picked the president of the United States. He's like a part of it and they're like up there they're changing the world and i think that that's super cool the series was very interesting and um one thing you do find out you find out like for sure sorry there's like a long hair um that tobias was the one who marked cecilia and i was just like that was like borderline unforgivable for me because he if he would have asked her, like, she was all in. Yes, she was at a point where she felt lied to and he was, like, worried and he did it for her protection. But you drugged her and, like, dragged her off in the middle of the night and had her whole back tattooed with wings against her will. Like, that was so bad for me. Like, when she woke up and she saw that, like, I think I was more pissed than she was. I mean... She was pretty pissed. She did kind of like go off the rails and like slash tires and set cars ablaze and things like that. So maybe she was more pissed than me, but I was pissed. I felt like she was justified in all of her choices back then and her retaliation, even though that's sort of how things got wrecked in the middle of the second book with Dominic dying because no one was honest with her about what would happen if they would have just that's another one of my least favorite tropes easily avoidable miscommunication if they would have just been like hey cecilia all this stuff is happening and it's really dangerous and we all love you and for your protection we need you to be marked because like we need you to get wings that's us claiming you you're my woman and i want you to have this mark so that you're safe because i love you she would have been like fine okay but they didn't they like totally took her choice away and they lied to her when they didn't have to and it sucked so in this book even like in the chapter where it's like from his perspective and he's talking about how he's having second thoughts he's like maybe I should call off the marking and like maybe I don't want her to be wrapped into this for life and you're like maybe you should just like ask her how about that genius and he's like nope we're gonna do it and you're like oh, fine. okay well another wrong choice on the tally board for Tobias but fine um so we find that out another thing is that I wanted more closure with Sean this book was left open-ended for Sean and his son the epilogue ended with him kind of opening the doors to introducing his son to the Ravenhood. So maybe there will be future books about that relationship dynamic. Um, but this book, we really haven't seen much of Sean since um, he came back with Dominic from France and they discovered Cecilia was with Tobias and they were upset about it. And that's really it. Like after Dominic's death, you don't see Sean or hear from Sean again until she comes back to town like half a decade later and he's married and has two kids. And you wanna know like what led up to that because she was kind of like his, his first love or her first love 
And <clears throat> they ended up wrapping up this book with him and Cecilia becoming really good friends and like getting back to regular communication without there being like resentment or grief. Um, and they really get back to a true friendship. But I just wanted more closure. He was basically a main character for a lot of this series and he kind of dropped off a little bit for me and I wanted more closure with that, I guess. Um, <clears throat> and other than that, there are probably other thoughts. This series was a, a chunky one, so I definitely could talk about this a lot longer, but I'm gonna wrap this video up and say, I liked this series a lot. I would recommend it. Um, I did listen to some of the audiobook for this last book to sort of push me through to the end. And the audiobook was so good. I totally get why um, they said, or why there was two narrators even for the first book. Cause I was like, they're only supposed to be from Cecilia's perspective. Why is there a male narrator? But the way they did it was like I thought where they had the male narrator do all of the male dialogue and he was so good. His French was amazing and he had all the different voices for the guys. And I would definitely in the future love to re-experience this series all in audiobook because I felt like it was just really well done. Um, so I'll probably do that sometime in the future, but not for a while. And uh, yeah, like I said, I would definitely recommend the series if you like sort of angsty, mystery, love triangle, romance, um, and you have the time, I would for sure recommend this. I liked it a lot. The, um, the spice was done really well, I believe, for what it was. Um, and I, Kate Stewart, if you ever see this, you're very talented and I will definitely be picking up more of your books in the future. I'm sorry it took me like half a month to get through all of this, um, but I did feel like after I read the first two, I just needed to take a break and read a couple other books as like palette cleansers uh, before I dove into the last one because I strongly believe that I want like my mind to just be in a good headspace when I dive into a book, especially if I'm going to be doing like a review like this on it, because um, I want my head to be in the best place to give you like my best, truest, honest review and not one of like a tired person forcing herself through it. Um, I feel like you guys deserve that and I feel like the author deserves that. Um, so yeah, again, sorry this took so long for me to get through, but it was worth it. I really enjoyed it and I think that you should read it. I hope that you've read it already because if not, I have spent this whole vlog just spoiling everything for you, um, but I did warn you, so there's that. If you have read this book and you have very strong opinions that you wanna chat about, please put it in the comments below. I would love to hear what your thoughts were about everything and all that jazz. So thank you so much for watching. This was my very first reading vlog through a series and <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. If you enjoyed it and wanna hear me talk more about other series or if you have read the Ravenhood series and you know that if I liked this, that I would like X, Y, Z, then please put those recommendations in the comments below as well. I loved any reason to add anything to my TV, all right? Um, so again, thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing day and a glass of rosé for me. Have a good one. Bye.